What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that you guys are having an amazing Labor Day weekend. So Judge Greg Mathis caught up with TMZ. Maybe I should say it's the other way around. They caught him at the airport, and he basically said that he is not, he ain't too proud to bet, like the temptations, baby, okay? He is on his David Ruffin. <laughs> I ain't too proud to beg, and you know it. Please don't leave me, girl. <laughs> ain't too proud to plead, baby, baby. Please don't leave me, Linda. Listen, listen, Linda, okay? Y'all remember that little boy? He was like, listen, 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 Linda. Um, She said that she was fed up, and the people who were interviewing him, I really, I really think that they asked the poignant question of infidelity in the marriage. And there's been a lot of speculations, a lot of rumors, et cetera, et cetera. When they asked him this question, the hesitation and the silence spoke volumes because this man is a trained judge, because he has a legal background. And anybody knows that in order to become a judge, you have to be a lawyer. In order to become a lawyer, you have to be trained in logical thinking, analysis, you know, all those things, right? Socratic methodology, Socratic questioning. So he knows how to ask questions. He knows how to answer them clearly, concisely. Right. That's what law school is. It's logic based. So that pause, it spoke volumes. It was loud. Right. That silence was loud. I want you guys to hear just it's only a couple minutes. I think it's like two minutes and 20 seconds. But I want you guys to hear his response to these questions because it's very telling in regards to what what we're not hearing, what's not being said. I let the worst days of my life. How about that? Okay, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I want to ask you, you know, with news of the separation, how are you holding up? Not holding up very well. I would say the uh, other man, maybe I'll be an uh, example for other men, cautionary tale. Don't neglect your wife. See how me at the airport now, flying out, as I have for 40 or four. 25 years, my wife has been third, serving the community, taping my show, having fun with friends. That's what happens, guys. Never be too busy or never have too much fun beyond your wife. So I do want to ask, you know, the date of separation is listed back in July 17. Has this been coming for some time now or was it something out the blue? Well, ever since we uh, started taping here in L.A., I committed to staying home more and being making my wife more, more of a priority. But as you see, I haven't. I'm still here on the road yeah. doing the same thing. And uh, in terms of uh, going out into another city. But it was I was gone for three weeks. That's what July 17th meant. Would you say you two are in a good place right now or able to maintain a friendship? Or oh, yeah, we're, we're still in the same house and we're maintaining a friendship. And I'm trying to get my wife back. Try to have to show her that, though. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully I can show her while we're there together before. And hopefully she doesn't complete the process. But um, I'm changing in hopes that she will. I'm going to get my wife back. How about that? Absolutely. I just wanted to eliminate all the rumors, too, that it's something about a baby or even me uh, molesting a child. It's none of that. I've just told you what it is. There were also, you know, kind of some rumors of any infidelity. Did you want to clear that up at all? You say it's solely neglect. Well, neglect um, can create suspicion, certainly. And if you're gone as much as I am, you have every right to suspect. You know, you go to work, you go serving the community around the country, then you go with your guys to sporting events around the country, you go to other events with, except without your wife hanging with you and enjoying herself with you. And so, yeah, she would have a right to suspect infidelity. But there was none of that going on. That's not the purpose. That's not the reason for this. So did you guys hear that last question? The interviewer asked specifically, he said, so there's not any infidelity going on. And Judge Mathis said, that's not the purpose. 
what do you mean that's not the purpose? He said, that's not the reason for this. Okay. He was just very evasive, in my opinion, right? And he was talking about going out with his friends and hanging out and not bringing his wife on a three-week trip. Here's my thing. Linda has been by his side for 39 years. 39 years. Almost four decades of her life. Raised his children. Those children are grown. If you guys have been together for 39 years, then that means that what the youngest or I don't know. No, the oldest, I think, is 39. And then the rest of them are younger. They're in their 30s, though. There are no small children at home. Why can't you bring your wife on this trip? You said, oh, you know, I'm at the airport and I'm flying out and let this be a lesson. Don't neglect your wife. Why isn't your wife by your side on your business trip and you put her, you know, book her a day spa, whatever, you know, while you're handling business and then you guys can have dinner together, rekindle the romance, you know, walk on the beach, whatever, but you're together. I understand that if you have a contract, if you have business to handle, that's fine, but he's in an airport talking about don't neglect your wife while he's neglecting his wife. The cognitive dissonance, it's not making sense to me. I don't understand how he can be a trained lawyer, then promoted to judge and have all that legal expertise and all that logical training, yet he's doing a double speak. It's almost like he is trying to plead the fifth and not self-incriminate. When the, when the TMZ reporter was asking him or interviewer was asking him specific questions, he was giving really evasive answers, really vague answers like, oh, well, you know, that's not the purpose. So <laughs> just say yes or no. <laughs> if Judge Mathis showed up in his own courtroom, he would dog him. He would dog his, himself out, giving these really evasive, you know, vague answers. Like I could only imagine if he was asking someone straightforward questions, and he was doing all of this, you know, jargon and all this extra language to explain just very concise answers and questions. That doesn't cut it, especially someone who is legally trained. That's what's killing me. I had a friend of mine who was studying to be a lawyer and she showed me the LSAT, the, um, the study guide, of course, not the actual test, but the LSAT study guide. And those logistical questions and analytical questions are no joke. In order to pass the bar, that's why, like, you know, you hear people having to take it multiple times. That test is the truth, right? This man... I'm assuming, took the bar, I believe it was he graduated from law school in Michigan somewhere, I think maybe Detroit or something like that. But you graduated from law school, that's three years of logist uh, logistical, logical, analytical, you know, training, and then passed the bar, became a lawyer, became a judge. Here you have someone that's, you know, TMZ in the entertainment media space, but just asking you basic questions and you're complaining about your wife. You're complaining about you neglecting your wife while in the airport, neglecting your wife. Your actions and your words don't match up, sir. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised that the TMZ guy didn't call him out on it, but I'm sure he wanted to you know, just kind of let him tell the story and keep him talking. But then when he asked at the end for clarification about the infidelity, because he, you know, he asked that follow-up question because Judge Mathis wasn't being clear. And the whole thing about the child, that was concerning. That, I had, I that was my first time hearing about that. I was like, um, what? And then for him to say, well, you know, there's no baby out here. Sir, if you are... <laughs> How 
how long can men have children? And I'm not even trying to be funny, but um, if you've been with your wife for 40 years, 39 years, then that means you guys are both at least like what, in your 60s? Listen, Robert De Niro, if you don't get somewhere and sat down somewhere and stop procreating, Robert De Niro is having kids in his 80s, okay? So I guess he does have some time out here. I don't know. I hope, <laughs> I hope we don't hear about Judge Mathis still out here having outside kids at his big grown age, sir. You know, um, the more I think about it and the more I, I really um, ponder on his... Um, his words not mac matching his actions. Just in this short clip, this interview, I'm siding more and more with Linda, uh, especially since there's no prenup and she'll probably end up getting half and she can just live out the rest of her life, you know, just doing her own thing, um, not having to raise any children, you know, just if she wants to travel with her girlfriends or whatever it is but not worrying about her husband stepping out on her. <laughs> Listen, Linda, um, self-care is key. So, and your peace of mind is what's, is what's most important. Um, you guys, let me know your thoughts about Judge Mathis saying he want that old thing back, but um, he's there in the airport alone. He could easily have his wife with him and you know, book her a beautiful spa day, treat her shopping spree, whatever she wanted. They have the money to do that. But instead he's complaining. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk with you in the next one. Take care, Aces. Bye.